How's it going guys? And welcome back to the studio. We are stoked <laughs> with all the stuff going on in the world. Things in Utah are looking pretty good. So we're able to come back uh, to, to headquarters in a little bit higher capacity. And uh, we thought it'd be fun to do a live. So we're still staying safe, wearing masks, taking temperatures, socially distancing. We've got a lot of knives on the table that you guys wanted to see. These are everything that you guys wanted to see. We didn't pick a single knife on the table. And I wanna start off with some shout outs. Uh, W Fam Cam, shout out to him. Evan Keeley, shout out, and Max Tinkender, shout out. They were on really early asking for shout outs for this live stream, so I figure, hey, we'll uh, we'll do it. <laughs> so while everybody shows up, um, I'm gonna start with a knife that was a lot of people asked for. There's been some buzz about. You guys know about this pattern. It's our new Spider Co. exclusive that we have going on. Um, so we have in our wonderful Natural G10 Jade G10. Uh, we've got some Mannix XLs, so some some big old Spyderco knives, uh, M4 steel with our JG10 uh, handles. We're really stoked on these. <laughs> and uh, these are coming soon. We haven't officially announced a date yet. Rumor is it might be Friday the 5th, June 5th, I think. That's the rumor. Don't hold me to that because I'm not sure. But uh, that gives you at least a kind of a, a batting idea as to when they'll be launching. Um, but anyways, these things will be really sweet. We're gonna release the coated version and the satin version at the same time. Normally we don't do that. Um, normally we try to get enough for everybody, but you guys know these things sell out so fast. So we decided we'd put these two together in hopes that they don't sell out as fast. I don't know how it'll go. So <laughs> if you want one, be on the website and uh, yeah, they'll be live soon. So we'll have an official date announcement very soon, but there's a little sneak peek for you for showing up live to our live stream. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, we hope everybody out there is doing great. And uh, oh yeah, Kurt's in the comments. So if you guys want to give, any, you guys want any shout outs or anything like that, I'm actually gonna pull Kurt up here in my, in my Slack so I can see what you guys got going on. Um, and you can also talk to Kurt because he's in the comments. Except for I can't see, oh, there he is, boom. Sorry guys, there it is. Okay, um, oh, Kurt's already sent me a shout out. Apparently, uh, fallen comments to, comments to the ground is watching from Egypt. So that's awesome. <laughs> that's super awesome. Um, all right, so next knife on the table, I actually don't have a sheet for because I lost the sheet right before we got going. It's been crazy, guys. It's been a whirlwind to trying to like get back in the flow of things here. Um, but this is the Buck Marksman. And I can't remember who suggested this, but there was somebody out there that wanted this thing. Um, but really cool knife, obviously made in the USA. And the thing that makes this thing cool is not only, you know, just the construction, buck, nice deep carry pocket clip, little things like that. Um, it's got a Grant and Gavin Hawk kind of uh, mechanism here on the back. And I can't for the life of me remember the name of it. And I'm looking on the floor. Ooh, I see the paper, guys. I'm gonna grab it real quick. <laughs> the fun of doing it live, right? All right, here we go. Boom, this is the Marksman. It goes for $114.99 on the website. And I'm trying to find out what the name of that lock is. It's called the Strong Lock System, or the SLS. So that's what's something that's really neat about this. Grant and Gavin Hawk, they make some incredible mechanisms. Um, and on this Buck one, I mean, it's no disappointment. So really cool knife from Buck, and a really cool knife with a little uh, Grant and Gavin Hawk magic on it as well. So, um, and I don't have the guy who wanted to see that, so sorry, no shout out, but uh, this was somebody out there who wanted to see that sweet knife. Um, now the next ones on the table are also uh, some US made classics and it came from Joshua Garland. He said, Case does not get enough attention on the channel. That's probably true. Uh, we don't feature Case a ton. You know, we just, it's about, you know, new patterns and stuff like that. It's about what you guys want to see. But since Joshua Garland wanted to see some stuff, I just pulled some of the Case knives that have kind of caught my attention recently. So um, kind of show you to him kind of one at a time here. So. Case has this really neat, I'm not gonna pull all of the uh, blades out because you know how it goes, I'll get cut right at the beginning of our live stream. <laughs> has this really neat kind of basket pattern going on. And uh, yeah, they're doing it in a lot of really cool colors. So you kind of get this, uh, you know, purple, violet-y, I'm not good with colors, <laughs> uh, color here. And then you're getting out of this turquoise color as well. I think they have it in a few others. Um, but I really, really like this pattern. I really, really like these colors. And for me, that's kind of what case knives are about. It's kind of about the look. Um, I like kind of a bigger case knife. I actually recently bought a uh, jack bladed trapper um, with like this purpley look to it. I think I've showed it off before. Um, but another neat one that they have, and actually this is one of my favorite traditional patterns, 
is they have this canoe pattern uh, jackknife in, this is a blue G10, almost a Blade HQ blue, so, which is pretty cool. Um, when we sat down with Case at SHOT Show this year, I told him, I says, dude, this should have been our exclusive. And he's like, oh yeah, it should have been. <laughs> so very close to a Blade HQ blue. Um, so just some kind of neat knives from Case. You know, they always got new stuff coming, or new patterns coming out every year. This year's actually, ex actually extra neat. And let me see if I can, uh, and oh, oh, hey, yeah. I don't know how close we can get to that. Carson's running our B cam today. Um, I don't know how close we can get to that, but you guys can see that they got their new Tang stamp. So Case does a Tang stamp that represents what year you know, you're in, what decade you're in. So since it's a new decade, they have a new Tang stack, new decade. So if you've been looking to get a Case knife, you can get a little bit of pocket jewelry, get a really neat in-pocket knife, and uh, get their new Tang stamp. So kind of a neat little you know, knife guy type thing to do. Um, that blue G10 goes for 70 bucks on the website. The, uh, t the, uh, the T01 goes for 84.99. And the uh, Merlot, that's the color that purple one is, Merlot. That Merlot one goes for also for 84.99. Um, and those basket weave ones are made out of a bone material, which is kind of neat. So really classic material and uh, really cool pattern. Um, let's see. Oh, I've seen if Kurt had any other shouts. Kurt, if you're watching, buddy, send those shout outs over. <laughs> and if you guys want to see us pull any knives live um, from the suggestions in the live stream, let us know and we'll pull those as well. Um, we do have a ton on the table, um, but just let us know. All right, uh, Connor88, he wanted to see a comparison between some smaller fixed blades. So he wanted to see a comparison between the Essie Azula and the Topps Street Scalpel. So I'll pull these out really quick. And uh, both really, really good knives. The Street Scalpel actually recently just sold out, um, but we happen to have one here at the shop, so we were able to at least show it off comparison-wise. So size-wise, obviously, the Street scalpel is coming in a little bit longer. Um, I would say that the Azula is definitely more of a multi-purpose multi type blade, and I would say that the Street Scalpel is a little more of a utility blade, right? It's a little bit uh, slender, a little, little more of that sharper, slender profile. Um, the Azula looks like a little bit more of a workhorse, um, but both really good knives. Um, medium-sized hand, you guys can kind of see how those fit in a medium-sized hand there. Um, I really like the purchase on the street scalpel. I like the choil in the front. It's got a lot of space. Uh, nice jimping along the back for really good retention there as well. And then, of course, that beautiful, beautiful micarta handle. You can never go wrong there. And then with the Azula, I mean, the Azula is a classic. So there it is again in a medium-sized hand. Um, you definitely have a little jimping across the top here as well. I went with the skeletonized version. This is the most common version of the Azula most of you guys buy. Um, but you can get micarta scales for this, so another bonus for the Azula. Um, but both really, really good knives. Um, Bang for your buck, I don't think you can go wrong with either of these. This Azula goes for like $52.95. Um, so really, really uh, nice little knives. And then the when comparing the sheaths as well, you definitely get a little more with the top sheath. Um, so the Azula, you get this kind of nice, simple um, sheath, and you could put different attachment points. You could carry it as a neck knife, however you want to do it. Um, and then with the street scalpel, it comes ready for scout carry. Nice Kydex sheath. You know, you get your, uh, your infamous Top's whistle, because you gotta have a whistle with your knife. And uh, I think I like the case, or the sheath on the street scalpel a little bit better. Um, but both really, really good knives. Um, you can't go wrong either way. The street scalpel currently, as of right this second while I'm talking, is out of stock, but should be back in stock very shortly. And then we always have a plethora of different Azulas, different colors, different hand materials, that type of thing. So both really cool knives, both great little fixed blades, either for a backup blade in the bush or for you know an EDC fixed blade, because um, they both have that kind of perfect size. Um, also, there was somebody else who wanted to see a comparison between the Azula and the Benchmade Hidden Canyon, so I grabbed Benchmade Hidden Canyon as well. So we'll start with the sheaths. Um, on this, again, with the Benchmade, you get a little bit more sheath to, to it, um, but Still both pretty simple sheaths. Um, I kind of like the tops and the Hidden Canyon come with that Scout Carry. That's my preferred way to carry most fixed blades. Um, and then looking at size comparison, you guys can see here, these two are gonna be a little bit more similar in size. You can see they're pretty dang similar. So what you're getting, the difference between the two is um, you get a little more belly on the, um, Hidden Canyon, just forgot the name of it. <laughs> you get a little more belly on the Hidden Canyon, um, which makes sense because this knife is actually designed uh, for skinning and hunting and things like that. Um, and then the other interesting thing with the Hidden Canyon is you have, 
you kind of have this jimping across the back here, kind of this, this big raised um, purchase, I guess. It's not really jimping, maybe it is. And then you have this smaller, tighter jimping um, right where your thumb would go. And then also, again, for hunting or skinning, right, you have it right on the edge so you can really get control um, when you're you know, processing an animal or doing any sort of camp chore or task or anything like that. So both really, really good knives. Um, again, the Azula is going for $52.95, and the Benchmade Hidden Canyon Hunter, this one's actually going for $94.99. This is on sale right now. So these have been discontinued. So if you've been looking to get yourself a Benchmade Hidden Canyon, this is now the time to do it, literally, because once they sell out, they're gone. Um, so we have, we have a good handful, but they are on sale, and once they're gone, they're gone. So really cool knife from Benchmade, and then of course, really cool knife from Essie. You know, the funny thing is, is when I'm comparing all three of these though together, I think, I think I would go Street Scalpel, Hidden Canyon, and then the Azula. Um, the Street Scalpel and the Hidden Canyon both, they just feel a little more substantial, just a little more knife for what you're getting. And I, I think the sheath too, a little bit better of a deal there. Um, but obviously with the Azula, you're getting a really budget knife too. So I guess the simplicity plays to that price point. So can't go wrong. Um, all right. Oh, Kurt's got some stuff. Um, so Zach stuff says, hi. How's it going, Zach? Uh, he spells his name Z-A-C-H. His mom knew he was smart enough for four letters. My mom knew he was only smart enough for three letters, so that's why I spelled mine Z-A-C. <laughs> uh, Max Tinkender, uh, there's a shout out for you. Let's see, Forrest Webb says he's carrying a Warney Delica with copper scales and a tie backspacer. Also, can he please get a shout out? So Forrest Webb. Cool carry, man. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, speaking of cool carries, uh, so I think it's Ka Knife. It was on Instagram. I don't know how to pronounce some of these Instagram names, guys. Uh, he wanted to see a Cold Steel Frenzy. And guys, anytime I get a chance to pull a Cold Steel Frenzy out, I'm gonna take the opportunity. So really, really neat knife. You get the G10 handle, you get the S35 VN blade. Um, just a crazy cool knife. You know, you get the two-way, uh, reversible pocket clip. Um, I've said it before multiple times on Knife Banner, but what you get with Cold Steel is this really interesting thing where they make these huge folding knives that su fit surprisingly well in your pocket. So, I mean, you know, can you carry a bug out in your cell phone in one pocket? Sure, you could, you may not want to. Could you carry a frenzy in your cell phone in one pocket? No. <laughs> but for how big this dang knife is, um, you can definitely uh, fit it in your pocket and it definitely carries really, really well. Um, you get that awesome Demco triad lock with this, thumb stud opening. And what I find most of the time with most, most cold steels and triad locks is you almost want like a controlled open um, instead of like flicking it open. The Frenzy actually, I think, let's try it out. Let's try it live, let's see if I can get a cut. Ooh, yeah, the Frenzy you can actually flip open. And of course, any cold steel knife can be tuned to flip open or not flip open. Most of them are meant to kind of be opened in more of a controlled manner. Um, you'll hear Lynn Thompson say over and over again, he really cares about your fingers. And so he makes his knives to be as safe as possible for your fingers. But yeah, so this is the Cold Steel Frenzy, really cool knife. It goes for $139.95 on the website. Let me see what the overall length is on this thing. Overall length on this is 12.25 inches. So 12 and a quarter inches on the overall length of the Frenzy. Really cool knife. <laughs> and it's got kind of this, you know, obviously this like almost, it's not quite a hawk bill, but definitely a Warren Cliff uh, style blade on that thing. So really cool pick. Ka Knife is the one who wanted to see that. Now, I'm sure that a few of you saw the thumbnail to this video and you're probably asking yourself, what is that knife in the thumbnail? Um, we recently put this knife on Instagram and so we had a couple people asking to see this on camera. So this is the Andrew, Andre, Andre, there it is, I have to read it. I'm gonna say everything wrong. Andre de Villers, this is the alien. So this is an integral uh, titanium lock, uh, frame lock knife. Really, really interesting design. Um, this uh, M390 blade is pinned in here. Um, so it does have these screws here. I haven't tried to remove it. I'm imagining that you can remove this and then also replace the blade if you wanted to. So to be honest, guys, I haven't handled this knife much, so I'm not sure if you can like buy replacement blades or you can buy different blade shapes, but either way, kind of an interesting idea, especially with an M390 knife, M390 blade. Um, really cool pocket clip with that, uh, you know, the ball bearing pocket clip that you see with a lot of high-end knives. Um, and then again, that uh, 
the whole thing is an integral frame lock knife. So, that, you know, obviously that means that the entire construction is one piece, so it's all one piece, and then it's got the frame lock with the stainless steel insert. So, really, really interesting knife from Andre de Villers. I always say his name wrong, I don't know why. Um, it almost looks like an Isham design a little bit, right? Like it's in that realm, but uh, de Villers does a lot of designs that kind of are Isham-esque, or maybe Isham is de Villers-esque. Not sure who came first, but uh, really, really neat little knife. And the, the, the funny thing is, is when I first saw this on the website, and even on the picture that we had on Instagram, some of you guys who were requesting to see this knife in this video, um, it looks bigger. Like it feels like it should be bigger. Um, but again, you know, with a medium-sized hand, it's not a huge knife by any measure. Uh, it's a nice pocketable knife. Um, definitely a bit of pocket jewelry. This thing goes for $620. Um, but you're getting a lot of custom level um, work, a lot of custom level attention to detail on this thing as well. So uh, if you want to see more of that, check out our Instagram. Kurt had a really, really cool picture of that thing up on our Instagram. And since we looked at kind of a spendy $620 knife with that de Villers with the Alien, um, there was custom EDC knives on Instagram. He wanted to see um, some Rockstead knives, which is really cool. And I normally would just have Jamie talk about this because Jamie like crushes on Rockstead all day. Um, but uh, you're stuck with me. <laughs> so he wanted to see a comparison between the Rockstead, and I'm gonna open these very carefully. Um, these are very, very nice knives and they are pretty expensive. So he wanted to see a comparison between the, the Hygo or the Higo and the uh, Heizen. I think I'm saying those names right, they are Japanese. So this is the Hygo, this is the Heizen. The Hygo goes for $1,500 on the website, and the Heizen goes for $765 on the website. Um, so there's a size comparison between the two for custom EDC knives out there. Um, this is the thing that Rockstead does, is very expensive knives, but these knives are actually designed to be used, right? So you could take that Alien and you could totally use it. Like you could EDC that knife all day, it's M390 blade. Um, but it's definitely, I think, like I said, a little more pocket jewelry. But these Rocksteads are like made to work. Like these are tough, tough knives. Um, the steel on the Hygo is uh, ZDP 189, and the steel on the Heizen is uh, YXR7. So both really, really high-end steels you see in a lot of custom work. And then you can just see like the polishes they put on these things, the bevels they put on these things. Everything about these knives is just attention to detail and quality. So really, really cool knives from Rockstead. Um, out of Japan, and uh, yeah, there's just kind of a, another side shot of each of them. But yeah, so the Hygo, definitely a much bigger knife than the Heizen. And again, sorry if I'm saying those names wrong. <laughs> um, both very expensive knives, uh, but again, it's it's interesting, you know, like I said, Rockstead really operates in this in this space where they're putting in so much attention to detail on the polishes, on the sharpening, on the steel choices, on the, on the whole construction, that you really are getting this just hard use knife just in that custom level pricing. Um, speaking of hard use knives, not in custom level pricing, <laughs> uh, Mattis Brumback wanted to see the Cold Steel SR1 Lite Tonto, and let's see if this one will that actually flipped open really nice. Um, so this is the SR1 Lite uh, from Cold Steel. This thing goes for $59.49 on the website. Really, really nice budget knife, and this thing is a bruiser. I mean, just look at this. Look at the stock on the, the blade steel here for this knife. It is so thick. Um, and not only that, but then look at the stock on the triad lock as well. Here, I'll put it this way, maybe we'll see it better. Look at the stock on the triad lock as well. This thing is just straight up a bruiser. Um, I love me a good Tonto blade. Cold Steel does a wonderful job with the Tonto blades. Um, you get the two-way reversible pocket clip, and uh, yeah, just like super beefy, super hardcore knife for 60 bucks. Uh, you really, really can't go wrong. Um, to be honest, this is my first time handling the lightweight version of this knife. I kind of want it. <laughs> just the way it feels in hand. Uh, the, it feels a little blade heavy because of how light the handle is, um, but overall, pretty sweet knife. Um, for how thick the stock is, I'm actually interested to how much. So the overall weight of the knife is 6.3 ounces, so it's definitely not a lightweight knife by any measure. But I will say, with how much stock you're getting and how thick that lock is, it's actually a pretty dang light knife for how strong this thing would be. So really cool knife from Cold Steel, and uh, 
when we're done here, I might have to go buy myself a new knife. <laughs> it's actually a pretty cool one. I've been carrying the Cold Steel 4MAX uh, Scout around, the, the new, more budget version of the, of the 4MAX Scout. And I've been loving that thing. It is a, it's a huge knife. That SR1 Lite is similar, but like a little more compact. So I'm, I'm kind of into that. Um, let's see. Lay Danny Phantom. I love your guys' Instagram usernames. He wanted to see a comparison of the Voxnez Colvera and the Fox Knives Suru. I think he also had a friend get on and comment that he wanted to see the Colvera because it was like uh, Danny Phantom made the comment like, I want to see the Colvera and the Suru. And then somebody underneath him said, I guess I want to see the Colvera. <laughs> and so it felt like somebody reached out to a non-knife buddy and was like, hey, make more comments so that they'll put this knife on. So I decided to throw them on for him. <laughs> so this is the uh, Colvera. Um, you get an M390 blade. Uh, I don't, actually don't know the handle material on this one. The Colvera comes in a couple different handle materials. Um, this is micarta. Cool. It felt like micarta, but I didn't want to misspeak. So yeah, so this one has micarta on it. They also come with a titanium. The Colvera might also come in a G10. Don't quote me on that, but I think that they do. We recently gave one of these away on Instagram. So if you guys aren't following us on Instagram, you really should. We have awesome content on Instagram and we have a bunch of rad knife giveaways on there too. So uh, nice micarta handle, M390 blade, uh, full titanium construction with the titanium lock bar, stainless steel insert, of course, that's what you want. And then this is a Voxnez design, so of course, you know, I love it. Um, but really cool knife from MKM. And then one thing that you'll see with MKM is they, they're based out of Italy. And so they make a lot of knives that can be used um, in multiple jurisdictions, right? So in Europe, I mean, rule, laws can change literally from country to country. And in Europe, that's like state to state. And the same thing stands true in the United States, but usually the laws don't vary hugely in different states in the United States, unless you're going to maybe California or New York or something like that. Um, so it does have a removable flipper tab, which is pretty cool. And then it uh, ha also has a, uh, it's a two-handed opener. So you could remove the flipper tab and use it as a two-handed opener if you happen to find yourself in a place that doesn't allow one-handed opening knives, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure what the laws look like right now in Canada, but this might be a, a cool knife for somebody up in Canada. Um, or you can leave the flipper tab on and, you know, just celebrate your freedom if you live in a state in the United States. <laughs> but really cool belly on that blade. Again, M390 and uh, yeah, cool design. And then the Fox Suru. Now this knife has gotten a lot of attention. Um, I think it was two years ago at Blade Show. It won like knife of the year or something, overall design. I can't remember what it was, but it won some big award. Um, really neat little knife as well. I think this is also a Voxnez design. It is, this is also a Voxnez design. Um, that dude does good work. Um, so M390 blade on this one. This one is the aluminum handle, I believe. Yes, it comes in a titanium version. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Uh, this is the aluminum handled version of the Suru. Uh, nice wire pocket clip and uh, yeah, just a, just a sweet little knife all the way around. So to give you the size comparison between the Colvera and the Suru, obviously you're getting a little more knife with the Colvera than with the Suru, so it kind of just depends. Um, also material choices, you are going to be able to pull micarta with the Colvera. There is not a micarta version in the Suru. I would imagine it would be due to all of these holes in the frame. It probably wouldn't make a very strong knife if it was a, a micarta front side there. Um, yeah, but both really cool knives. So Ladang Phantom, Ladani Phantom, I can't read my own handwriting sometimes. <laughs> There's those two knives compared with each other. Suru and the Colvera, both really cool knives. Um, you know, uh, the Italians in general, it's actually really neat. Um, we actually want to go out and visit them sometime. <laughs> and, um, the, you know, you guys watched our documentary on Boker and kind of the area that Boker's based in being the knife city there in Solingen. Um, so the place in that these, a lot of these knife makers are based is in Maniago, Italy. And it's all, that's like the knife capital of Italy, which is really cool. So like Fox, Lion Steel, MKM, um, there's a few other ones that are based all in the, basically the same little town and they all kind of share resources. And that's kind of what MKM Knife does is they work with all these manufacturers to make these really neat knives. So maybe one day we'll be able to bring you guys uh, some cool stuff from Maniago, Italy. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, Kurt's got a bunch more shout outs on here. So I'm going to uh, give you guys a couple shout outs. Uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> our boy Medic Mason. Uh, so Medic Mason, he said, Zach, buddy, 
now that you're back in the building, that, B that BHQ flannel can get back in the works. So Medic Mason, I am actually working on it. I know a lot of you guys have asked for a Blade HQ flannel. You guys know I'm a flannel guy. Um, so but the thing is, is I'm, a flat, I'm a bit of, a, not a snob, but I'm particular. So I like Carhartt flannel specifically. It's just what I grew up with. So I'm trying to get a hold of somebody at Carhartt to see if we can get a collaboration going. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, Medic Mason, thank you for putting it at the top of my list. <laughs> um, Let's see, Mr. Beyond the Beard, he said, I'd love to get a shout out for catching my first live. Dude, thanks for showing up live. We appreciate it. It's always a blast. Jack Manley said, um, Kurt, can you see how Zach feels about the Blade HQ brand flannel? <laughs> I think Kurt might want that flannel to happen too, because that's two comments from Kurt about the flannel. <laughs> and then, um, then Medic Mason, actually, so another one from Medic Mason. This is actually a great comment. Uh, who here thinks Blade HQ should have more custom meme stickers like Ham Hands and Bug Out? Guys, we actually have some really fun designs like Ham Shark. Um, we've got one that's like a bug out that says hashtag anything. We've got some like fun designs and we ran the um, Main Man Trevor t-shirts a little while ago and a few of you guys bought those. It wasn't enough to show enough interest if you guys really want that stuff. So if you're watching live, let us know in chat. If you're not watching live, let us know down in the comments. If you guys would like more Blade HQ merch, kind of like the Main Man Trevor t-shirts, but we could do you know, a Ham Shark uh, t-shirt or sticker. Uh, we could do hashtag anything with a bug out t-shirt, sticker, whatever. Let us know down in the comments. Um, and that's something we could run here on YouTube and you guys can just click over and, and buy stickers or shirts or whatever you'd like. Um, so let us know and we will totally make that happen. We have some really fun designs. Um, all right, so Sprouse Craig, I think that's how you say his name, was on Instagram. Uh, he's actually in surgery right now, and he said he was going to watch this when he got out of when he when he got out of the you know all the anesthesia and all that stuff. So I hope you're watching Sprouse Craig. Uh, you wanted to see the Kaiser Pinkerton. I hope your surgery went well, and I grabbed a Kaiser Pinkerton for you to see. This is the Kaiser Pinkerton Nomad. Um, I actually don't know much about this knife. Uh, this is an S35VN blade, and I'm trying to see what the I'm assuming this is a titanium, yeah, full titanium construction on this one. So um, S35VN blade, full titanium construction. Um, it does just have the, let me turn it around so you, so you guys can see better. It does just have the one position pocket clip. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a really interesting, still a little oil from the packaging. We just pulled it out of the box. Um, definitely a really cool, interesting design. You don't see Persian designs very often. Um, and I think that it's kind of cool to see one in such a big format. I feel like when I see a Persian this big, it's usually a fixed blade or something like that. So definitely a, a good knife for big hands. Uh, definitely a good knife if you're into Persian blades. Um, you just don't see them very often. So this goes for $180 on the website. And again, Sprouse Craig, I hope, Surgery went well. I hope that helps you out on uh, seeing that knife and seeing if it's something that you want. The other cool thing about this knife, and this is something that Kaiser does a lot, a lot of actually, there's a couple knives on the table that have this as well, but these uh, barrel spacers on the back, I just love this little touch. You know, it's just like a little extra detail, just these barrel spacers that just have like a little bit of work, a little bit of uh, a machining to them. And so, I don't know, something I always really like. Kaiser does it a lot. Um, I wanna say, who else had it on there? No, uh, the Colvera, the MKO M Colvera had a cool backspacer, but not like that. So you can see just kind of another little cool backspacer. And I don't know if you guys are the same as me, but like I'll regularly just pull my knives out and just like look at them. Like when, I don't know why, it's just like something I do to like relax. I'll just like pull my knife out and be like, oh yeah, like, oh, look at this. Oh, I never noticed that before. And so I always like when knives throw in a little extra spice. I think that's another reason I like those case knives is just a little extra spice on them. Um, all right, so next one is... Uh, kind of an interesting knife. This is another knife that I've never handled before. This is one reason I love asking for suggestions from you guys because, I mean, we've got like thousands and thousands and thousands of knives here at Blade HQ, and so we don't get to handle all of them. Um, so it's fun when you guys suggest stuff that I've never handled, uh, like this Winkler. This is the Contingency. This is a username on Instagram that I don't know. It's just a bunch of letters and a number. So MPGLNK20. <laughs> is who wanted to see this knife. So this is the Winkler Contingency. And uh, man, this is a really, really cool knife. And I'll tell you guys right out of the gate, when we pulled this, um, everybody was like, oh my gosh, smell the handles. And they smell really good. So this is like, I'm pretty sure walnut. Let me double check, maple, it's maple wood. So this is a maple wood handle. Um, I know Winkler uses some really cool steels. This is a, a 5160 on the blade material. 
Really nice finish. Um, anything from Winkler is going to be something like this that's just beautiful, um, but also made to use. Um, this particular knife has an interesting shape to it. You can see when I when I hold it in hand, kind of how it sits. So you know you get a little bit of a belly there, um, but it's definitely still arced down. It's not a crambit, but it kind of feels like a crambit. Um, but anyways, just an interesting knife from Winkler. And then it comes with a really nice, just a nice Kydex sheath with a little clip off to the side here. You could probably move that a clip around to anywhere that you wanted. But a uh, pretty cool knife from, from Winkler. Probably not something I would carry, but I can definitely respect, one, the craftsmanship that goes into it, and then two, the design. I'm sure this is like, I mean, for, uh, for our boy on Instagram, I'm not gonna try to spell his name again. Uh, I mean, this very well could be like his grail knife. So really neat knife from, uh, from Winkler Knives. And let's see if I can put it back in the sheath correctly because I always do it wrong. Yes, I won that time. <laughs> All right. Um, so you guys may have heard of the Medford Praetorian Slims that have recently come out and a bunch of you guys wanted to see them. So we have some now. Uh, we've got them in a bunch of different variations. So I thought I would show this one off. You get a CPM S30VN blade. You get full titanium construction. Um, just a nice you know, pocket clip there on the back. And this is something that I will say about this knife. Um, you know, you guys all know Medford knives are, uh, they're burly knives, right? Like, what did I, what did I say about that SR1? Was, they're bruisers, right? They're big knives. This is legitimately a very, very light, slim knife um, that could slip in your pocket and just, you'd almost forget about it. Um, so I really, really like that. Um, and you know, Medford does a lot of cool work. They've got some autos recently that have come out. They've got these new slims that have come out. Um, just some really neat knives. So you definitely get that uh, Praetorian profile that Medford's most known for. The knives that are, you know, beasts that are bruisers, um, but maybe more in a in a more carryable uh, format. Uh, total weight on this thing is only 3.72 ounces. So again, for a Medford, like this is super light. Like that was the first thing I noticed when I picked it up was just how light this thing was. So really cool new knife from Medford Knives. Um, you can pick that up on the website. Oof. This particular one is a special version. This has got a, a PVD finish with a blue anno. Um, so this is kind of like more on the custom level. So this one goes for 645. So this one's a little bit fancier. It was just the one I grabbed. Uh, we do have them on the website for uh, much less. I can't remember the price range, but much less than that on the website. So Medford Praetorian Slims, really neat little knife. Um, and speaking of lightweight knives, um, it's me, Eric G, wanted to see a comparison between the Spyderco Pair 3 Lightweight and the Native 5 Lightweight. So we pulled both of those. And so this is the Native 5 Lightweight. Um, you've got an S110V blade on that. And then this is the Pair 3 Lightweight with a um, CTS BD1N blade on that. And then they both have the FRN handles. The native comes with a backlock. The uh, pair of three comes with this compression lock. Um, so both pretty different knives. I mean, those are both different steels. The handle materials are the same, um, but the lock types are different. Um, you do get, oh, nope, I thought the native lightweight had a, had a wire pocket clip. So even down to the pocket clips, very different knives. Um, the native is a four-way reversible pocket clip on the native. The pair of three lightweight is just two-way reversible pocket clip. Um, so yeah, so there's your there's your size comparison on those. They are actually pretty different. Um, if you're looking in that size range, I guess they're pretty similar size-wise. But if you're looking for any other reason, like steels, locks, pocket clips, you know, usability, definitely different knives. And you can even see there's a bit of a, a thickness difference there as well. You know, you get that compression lock, which is a really really good lock, and then you get that super thick uh, back lock on the Native Five, which is pretty cool too. So both very, very light. Um, the Native 5 comes in at 2.4 ounces, or 2.45 ounces, and the Spyderco Pair 3 comes in at 2.5 ounces. So, <laughs> so the size is very similar, the handle material is very similar, but uh, other than that, pretty different knives. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm interested to know, let me know down below which one you guys would go with. Because they are so similar, it really kind of comes down to steel and lock type. So let me do it down below. Would you guys go with the pair of three lightweight or would you guys go with the native uh, lightweight? I'm interested to know. All right. Um, the next one up, oh, I'm sorry. That native five lightweight goes for 140 on the website and the pair of three lightweight goes for 112 on the website. Um, 
Now this next one, I'm actually pretty excited about. Uh, I've never handled this knife ever, and uh, but I saw it and I was like, whoa, this thing looks cool. So this is uh, Meaty's EDC. This is the DPX Gear Heat Hiker. I wanna make sure I got all the names right. Uh, so this is just a, oh, I haven't even taken out the sheet, there it is. This is just a chunk of S35, or S30V um, knife made in the USA. Just kind of a cool, just a cool little fixed blade. I mean, similar to, to kind of our Azula and stuff that we were looking at. Definitely a, a shorter working blade than you would get with that. Um, nice purchase, you know what I mean? I would think that was probably a bottle opener on the top of it there. <laughs> but the thing that I think is really cool and you guys probably already saw is that it's got this carabiner piece built in, right? So you could just like hook it to whatever you wanted to hook it to. And then you've got your fixed blade just hanging around with you. Um, and that carabiner has got really good spring retention. So it's not like gonna just flop open if you're walking around or whatever. So kind of an interesting knife. We had a lot of people asking for some DPX gear stuff. And uh, this was the one that caught my eye the most. The one thing that I will say, again, the pictures are hard sometimes to tell how big a knife is, especially on the website, right? Because you don't have a lot of really good reference. But um, this knife overall is 6.25 inches. So you guys can see even here, it's a pretty, pretty long knife. We can take our yardstick of uh, cool little fixed blades, our Azula here, and compare them that way as well. And you can see there, it's actually longer than the Azula. Um, so kind of a neat knife from DPX Gear. One I've never handled before until literally right now. <laughs> well, pulling it and then showing you guys. But uh, kind of a neat little knife from DPX. Um, DPX isn't a brand that we talk about often, but we do have a handful of knives from them on the website. So you guys should uh, head over to the website, check them out, see what they got. At least check out this Hiker, the Heat Hiker. Um, just kind of a neat little knife. And uh, it comes in at $99.99, so just under 100 bucks for a big chunk of S30V steel, made in the USA. Seems like a good deal. Um, all right, so we've got two more knives here. Let's see. And then I've got a couple that you guys live have asked for. I'm gonna grab them, they're off to the side of the table. Um, so, uh, Therano Alvardo wanted to see the Iona, the Giant Mouse Iona in both aluminum and FRN. So here they are in both aluminum and FRN. The FRN version here on the bottom of the Iona, it goes for $99 on the website, and the aluminum version goes for $140 on the website. So um, besides the handle material, the exact same knife, you get uh, that awesome M390 blade, you get the sweet deep carry pocket clip, um, you know, a nice little, uh, I'll show you the one, nice little uh, liner lock here with a bit of jimping on it, which is kind of nice, so it's not a choil, but when you put your hand there, it definitely locks your hand in, which I'm always a big fan of. Um, yeah, cool, cool little knives. And uh, you know, these are Vox Onso designed, so you can never go wrong with a giant mouse knife. Um, and then the weight difference between the two, it's interesting. I usually don't focus weight on my knives very often, but we've had a handful of knives on the table. Maybe that's something you guys are looking at right now a lot. Um, had a lot of knives on the table where I'm looking at weights, but the weight on the FRN one goes is uh, 2.59 ounces, and the weight on the aluminum one, no, I don't have a spec on it. <laughs> <laughs> so when we checked these in, we didn't weigh them. So I can't tell you, but I can tell you, obviously, uh, the aluminum one definitely has a little more substance to it. Not a ton, but it's definitely more present. Um, the FRN one is fairly light, coming in at 2.59 ounces. Um, and that aluminum one, I don't know weights well enough, guys. I'm not even gonna try to guess for you. Um, but definitely has a little more substance to it. So both really good knives, just kind of depends on what you want. With the AFRN, you can get in a couple colors, and in the aluminum, you can also get in a couple colors. So um, check out the Iona on the website. And I will say that the Iona for $99 with M390 blade, it's hard to beat. That's really hard to beat price-wise. I mean, even at $140 with the aluminum frame and the M390 blade, it's pretty hard to beat. Like, it's a really, really good knife for the price that you're paying. Um, there's all the suggestions that you guys had just kind of from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I've got a couple live off to the side here. Um, we are probably getting ready to roll this thing up. So if you guys want a shout out, if you guys want to tell me what you're carrying in your pockets, if you want to know what's in my pockets, just let me know. And uh, basically these two knives and we're gonna almost be done. So we'll just see, we'll see where you guys take us. All right, um, let's see. Kyle Anderson, who's watching in Australia, super cool. 
Um, he wanted to see the Kaiser Degnan Guru. Yet another knife I've never handled before. Um, so this is S35 VN blade. Ooh, that like flipped open. Awesome. I want to do that again. That was awesome. Ooh, I really, dude, Kai, or Kai, not Kyle. Kai Anderson. Kai, you've got some, uh, you got some good taste here, buddy. This is a nice knife. Uh, full titanium construction on this one. You get the uh, kind of cool backspacers like I pointed out before. Um, full titanium pocket clip. And uh, man, this is actually a really cool knife. I don't know how this has kind of flown under my radar, but I'm really into this. So this is the Guru from Kaiser. Um, suggested all the way from Australia. And I'll tell you guys, man, this thing, it like, I'm trying to find the best way to explain it, but it like ramps up. It's like, it doesn't want to release immediately. So you kind of have to ramp up on your thumb and then whew, just flies open. Really satisfying knife. Um, something really neat about this knife too is it's it's pretty compact. It's a pretty small knife, um, but you can see the blade stock on this thing. This thing is a thick boy. So <laughs> really nice uh, thick stock on that knife. So really neat knife um, from Kaiser and uh, goes for $179 on the website. So if you guys have been looking for just kind of a unique EDC, I don't know about the rest of you, but this has been flying under my radar. It's pretty cool. And I really like this kind of matte stone washy finish that's on the handles here. Um, it is titanium. It's not super slippy and maybe that has to do something with the finish. Um, yeah, cool knife from Kaiser. <laughs> Thanks Kai, that's awesome. Thanks for tuning in too, man, appreciate it. What time is it in Australia right now? I don't even know. Be like, I don't know. I don't know how Australia works. <laughs> I just know there's like cool stuff there. I've always wanted to go. I need to go sometime. Maybe I'll go, Kai, and me and you will hang out, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Zachary Rosenblum and Gabe Sutter. It sounds like a couple of you guys wanted to see this. They wanted to see the Kershaw Lucha. That's a, a, a great little balisong um, from Kershaw. And the thing that makes this thing amazing isn't just, you know, it's got great construction, it flips really smooth. Again, not a professional flipper by any measure, but I know you guys out there who are flipping have really loved this Lucha. Um, not any of those things that makes it so great. It goes for 120 bucks. So for 120 bucks for such a high quality, amazing Balasong, oof, like you really can't, like you legitimately cannot beat this knife for getting a live blade Balasong that's just gonna kick butt. Really good weight. Um, I've seen a lot of you guys out there flipping. It's on bearings. And I know that when I was kind of messing around with this at SHOT Show, it felt fast to me. Again, as a guy who's not a flipper. Um, but a lot of you guys are loving it. Let me know down in the comments if you guys prefer bearings or if you prefer bushings or what you prefer with your balisongs. Um, it's kind of part of the knife world that I know a bit about, but I'm definitely not tuned in too often because I'm not carrying a balisong every day. I'm not flipping a balisong every day. But anyways, the Kershaw Lucha, that was Zachary Rosenblum Bloom, and Gabe Sutter. Both uh, wanted to see that one. Really good choice, guys. And again, at 120 bucks, I, I literally don't know how you can beat the Lucha price-wise um, for what you get. It's just an amazing knife. Um, let's see, Kurt said, um, shout out, Metal Complex is a champ. So Metal Complex is a champ, guys. Check them out. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's all the knives that I've got on the table. Um, nobody's brought in any other knives. So I think we'll probably conclude our first video back in the studio after, it's been, well, it feels like it's almost been two months or something. It's been a long time. Um, so it's been great hanging out with you guys. It was great looking at some of the knives you guys are stoked on. Um, I always love doing it because again, like the Winkler and like that uh, Guru and like some of the other knives on the table, they're knives that I never get to touch, so it's always a blast to see what you guys are digging. And hope everybody out there is staying safe, doing well, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one.